time. So when did your love for comedy start? What was that moment for you? Was it a particular moment or, or, or what was it when you started falling in love with comedy? Um, I would say that Sinbad and Red Fox were patient zeros. Nice. For me. In terms of just Red Fox, I heard it because my, my pops had the albums, right? The party albums. And then Sinbad was the first time I saw it. And this is like back in the day. Nobody remembers this, but back in the day, like HBO, Cinemax, and all them joints, they would do a free preview weekend. And so once a year, HBO was free on your TV just for you to see all of the different content they had to offer. And that would be the weekend that HBO would show all the best fucking movies and all the best concerts. HBO used to show concerts and shit. And they would show a comedy special, you know, and it might be like a Lane Boozler or like somebody, you know, of that era, right? Strong comics, Gary Shandling. And they fucked around the show. Sinbad one year on the free preview. Bro, it was a wrap, man. I was like, that's that's fun. Now, I didn't get the courage to do it till college. At this point, I was probably like 10 or 11. So wow. it would be a long time before I ever, you know, got the balls to actually try it. But I would say Red Fox and Sinbad. And then what sealed the deal was when Comedy Central came on the air. I guess I might have been 12 or 13. And so Comedy Central had a show called, it was one of the shows when the network launched. It was called Stand Up, Stand Up with Wally Collins. And Stand Up, Stand Up was essentially just a compilation of comedy clips from the previous week on shows. So Stand Up Comedy used to come on TV all over the place back in the day. The 80s right. And 90s. Like there was like li no less than 10 shows that showed, in addition to late night. And so I remember watching Wally Collins every week and like getting into comedy and watching all the different clips and then AJ Jamal and all of that. And he had the A-list, which was like the more showcase style show or whatever. But I just, I remember those two programs distinctly because that was the only time I really veered away from sports or cartoons uh, to watch regular TV, if you will. And Got, Gotcha. And so you was big on, in baseball. That was your, that was your, um, your sport of choice growing up? Everybody should play baseball for you. Everybody should wait tables and play baseball for a year. The baseball teaches you patience, man. There's no other sport where you suck 70% of the time <laughs> and you are considered good. If you're only good 30% of the time in any other sport, they say you suck. Straight There's up. There's only 30% from the field shooting three-point. That nigga trash. Straight up. Quarterback only completed 30% of his passes. Trade that motherfucker. <laughs> For and baseball, so what, was you your ambition like to go to college for baseball and, and go to the pros? Like, was that a kid dream? You know, it's crazy. I went to Florida A&M because I thought I could walk on to their baseball team. That I was, was going to ask you why you went. I Well, I'm legacy. You know, my mom's graduated from there. My father was a, was a, was a graduate professor of journalism there. Wow. Um, but it came down to three schools. So I knew I was going to go to a black college, but it came down to Clark Atlanta, Tennessee hey. State, or Florida A&M. And so in hindsight for journalism, Atlanta would have been a better city. But you know when you were fuck up and you wilding. And you know what? I need to go somewhere where my mom and daddy got friends because I need people that's going to look out for me which was probably the right choice because if I've been in Atlanta with no supervision, with nobody on campus on the faculty to have my back, it had been a trip. Tennessee state didn't have a baseball team. So that took them off the list immediately, but I got to college. I tried out for the baseball team, got cut immediately and then had to start figuring out my life. Wow. Funny, funny that was thing. Like the first time I thought about my future was walking home from baseball trials. Wow. And, and what were you like, thinking in that moment? Home. I'm going to be amazing, man. My ass was at Shoney's two days later, waiting tables. 
Damn. Shout out to Shoney's. It probably ain't but three left open. Nobody even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right? I remember Shoney's. It was because I'm from you Evans. know I'm from Florida. That's why. And, yeah. and I went to I graduated from Clark Atlanta University. So I actually went to Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Atlanta right now. <laughs> I was close, man. I was close. I really was, you know. But you know, it all works out for a reason. You know, I'm very thankful to the faculty and staff at Florida a and like I always will be. I've been on the record for saying that a million times. And so when did you say, all right, I'm going to try stand-up? What was that moment when you was like, fuck it, the, the baseball didn't work out, so I'm going to pursue this, this comedy career? So my degree was in journalism, and part of the journalism curriculum is impromptu speaking. So we had to do an impromptu speaking class, and so – Every week for a month, the teacher would give you, it was like an envelope, right? And then the envelope was the topic that you had to give a five-minute speech on. Whether you knew anything about it or not, you had to talk for five minutes straight on this, on this thing or whatever. And so every week, I would get the envelope and open it up, go out in the hall, prep for five minutes, come back in and do my speech. And almost always I got a laugh and it wasn't on purpose. I wasn't trying to, but I guess there was something natural about, I don't know, persona, stage presence, you know, aura, whatever you want to call it. Niggas just found me funny. And it got to a point where the teacher started accusing me of deliberately throwing the assignment. And I wasn't, I'm like, I'm just talking. I don't know why, but that was the first taste of you know standing in front of strangers and watching them respond positively to my thoughts and i was like okay i think this is something that i can try and start fucking around with then i was still in credit cards in college and <laughs> and so i got arrested and before i got probation why were you still in credit cards because it makes money justin that's why why okay. you can make you do crime for two reasons Cause it feel good, or it makes you money. Okay, <laughs> like, that's it. Those and who were you stealing credit cards from? Oh, I was working at the post office, so it wasn't like I was going in people's purses and shit. These were already enveloped and sealed credit cards from the bank, and <laughs> and that's where the community of Florida A and M comes into play. Cause you know, if I'm anywhere else, I really think I get expelled. But you know, it, it takes people seeing the potential in you when you don't even see it in yourself. And, you know, probation, that was a time while I was still in school. And that's when I got focused. Like that was like the okay, for real, what are we doing with our life? I was like, you know what, I like that comedy shit. Let's see what the fuck that do. And I started doing stand up, got back in school, I got suspended for a semester for that shit. And so during that suspension, because they knew you got arrested, that's why you got suspended. Yeah, yeah, campus misconduct is you know you violate student code of conduct. You got to fucking go sit down somewhere for a little while. Gotcha. And so during that time, that's when I went and started doing the road. I ain't have shit else to do. I ain't got nowhere else to go. So I may as well just start it. So I just started riding a greyhound and going and doing road comedy. I still had my financial aid check. I got my FI8 check before I got suspended. So I was basically sitting on six G's with nothing to spend it on. Sweet, 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 sweet.